As a number of elections draw closer, governorship candidates and Igbo elders for him urge the federal government to get military out of the southeast. And on the collapsed building in Ikoi, death toll still on the rise as Governor Sonwolu visits. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakol. Candidates for Saturday's governorship elections in Anambra State have spoken with one voice on the security or insecurity threatening the polls and urged the federal government to urgently demilitarize the southeast zone and stem the heightened tension between the security agencies and the youths. In the same vein, the chairman, Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has restated that the election in Anambra State must hold. Well, joining us to discuss this are analyst Sonny Maduka, Francis Chilaka, and security consultant Besman Jumbunzi. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Miriam. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Besman, because you obviously are a security person, and one of the major problems or one of the reasons why many concerns have come from Anambra and without Anambra is uh, because of the insecurity. Uh, in the land. But I'd like to ask you, for someone who's looking from the outside in and all of the reports that we've been hearing, what do you think is the reason for the uh, insecurity in Anambra State? We've heard the political, uh, the, the candidates for the elections, especially the former central bank governor, saying that they are, uh, the insecurity in the, in the state is politically motivated. Um, is, is that what you think? Ooh, I remember I was on um, Plus TV earlier in the year, and I made a statement. I said, when the 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 elites, the leaders, those who should know in southern southeastern Nigeria, when they were um, abdicated their responsibilities to non-state actors, and when they were supposed to oppose the activities of these non-state actors, they all kept quiet. And keeping quiet then has metamorphosed into what we have now. So it is a it is a function of both uh, political and um, well to a large extent there might be there might be some some substance in the agitations, but by and large, I think it is the failure of the elites to control the narratives in the in the southeast that have led to where we are today. You're from the southeast, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, and you're saying that this is mostly failure of mm -hmm. the elites, not necessarily the leaders, but the elites, which means that you're talking about it's, it cuts across whether those who are holding power or not, the leaders of thought, the traditional leaders, and the government, of, uh, you know, it cuts, it cuts across. See, I made an, I made an example on a, on a paper I submitted recently. I said the difference in the southwest is that the southwestern elites will not abdicate their space for non-state actors to decide or to shape their narratives. When Sonny Igbo started his own, the people that matters in the southwest shut him down and they ensured he didn't dictate their narratives. But in the southeast, most of the elites were playing the ostrich. Most of them were looking for political relevance. Most of us kept quiet. And it has snowballed into what we have today. Like I said earlier, also, there will be some element of substance in the agitations, but it will never work when you leave the space for non state actors. And that's the consequence that we have today. Talking about substance here, before I go to others, um, the substance that you're referring to in the agitations, uh, one of the reasons why they have been con continuously sat at home is because they're saying, IPOB, um, that their leader needs to be released unconditionally. Now, there are other issues that might also have substance, I guess, which is that they have been getting the short end of the stick. They have not necessarily been listened to. They've not been um, 
catered to as every other part of the country has been catered to or listened to. Uh, and, and I'm going to ask you again as a security person, in dealing with these issues, whether it be political or not, uh, how well has the government, not just the state governors, but even the federal government, dealt with this issue as, as opposed to the federal might that we see every other day? Really, um, the issue of release of non unconditionally might not just be realistic because he is out. See, what some of us will agitate for is the free and fair trial. A trial that is free and fair, that's not manipulated. Who's, who did, who's, who's, who's to determine lost. the freeness and the fairness of the, 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 the trial? The because that's again is something that needs to be called to question. Can we truly, looking at how the judiciary, how a bit wonky our judicial system has become, and how much influence the executive has on the judiciary, can the common person have trust and hope in that wonky system? Um, well, I'm one of those who, who believes that Nigeria judiciary, to a large extent, is still sane. Yeah, the it's corruption everywhere, we have corruption in every strata of Nigeria, um, social, political, economic life. But you see, our judiciary to a large extent, I'm not saying they're perfect, I'm not saying they are where they ought to be, but to a large extent they've maintained a level of um, appreciation that probably you might not find in other sectors. Now again, when, when, when you say release somebody unconditionally, are we setting the right precedence? Now, it didn't start with this government. We've had agitations all over, even from Abasanjo, when Ghani Adams was doing his own in the southwest. Abasanjo said, shoot at sight, any OPC person. It doesn't mm. make it right, but at least we evolved. And the failure of government, the failure of institutions, way back, is all I'm feeling today. And the government, yeah, I might not give a pass mark to this government on how they've handled the issue of um, agitations, and, uh, mm -hmm. national, all these um, ethnic nationalities. But to a large extent, I think they should let justice take its course, mm -hmm. and we cannot abdicate the space to non-state actors. Mm -hmm. That might just mm -hmm. mark the end of the nation. Okay. Dr. Madika, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in um, w where Bestman dropped it off. He's, he's saying... Um, he's talked about abdication of responsibility. He's talked about the fact that we can still de depend on the judiciary to have a free, um, you know, uh, uh, and um, painless, um, uh, you know, case for Namdi Kanu. But that's not necessarily the crux of the matter. An election is coming up in a few days, and both the all the candidates who are running for office. Uh, traditional leaders and those in the state are saying we do not want the level of security especially the soldiers we want them to be taken out um, from the from the mm -hmm. southeast so that we can have free fair and credible elections uh, what's your take on this okay i think uh, the, the problem is as uh, they had just pointed out the issue that the foundation of this problem we have to look at the foundation it's not about this actors uh, I think we're having uh, connection issues with you. So I'm going to go to Mr. Chilaka. Um, Chilaka, just as I asked the question, um, can we trust the process in the case of Namdi Kanu, but also the people in the Southeast are saying we do not want the army. It's an election. The police is enough. We've seen how many thousands of policemen have been already posted um, to the Southeast, especially to Anambra State, and knowing that the election is on Saturday. But we've also seen videos of people who, a particular candidate who was live on television and he, we were hearing gunshots go off. We've also seen all kinds of things happen in Anambra. Should the federal government be risking um, that? Um, I think, let me, let, me, let me start with the issue of Nandi Kano and the position of um, the, the Igbo leaders and the religious leaders asking for unconditional relief. Um, we, we need to tell ourselves the truth. Uh, I do not believe in the judiciary to do anything good uh, because one, and I don't even believe in the government doing anything good because you need to ask yourself, mm -hmm. why wasn't Namikano brought back into the country? 
we need to find we need to we need to look at issues holistically where they are how was he brought back into the country if the way he was smuggled mm -hmm. back into the country does it show you that you know the government is ready to uh give justice to him that is on one side on the side of the election i am really really uh, i must say that i'm really really shocked and i'm very very unhappy that um, the government has decided to deploy this number of soldiers police security personnel just to Anambra State. You know, what is going to play out? IPOD is saying, sit at home. Federal government is saying there's going to be an election. Now tell me, who would come out with this number of security personnel? Who would come out to come and vote? Well, well Mossab has, says that, uh, has said that um, the elections will hold and, and that they're guaranteeing some level of sanity and safety. They're, they're guaranteeing that people can come out and vote. I want to correct something. IPOP has not necessarily said that everybody should sit at home. IPOP is saying they, as a group, will sit at home. But whoever wants to go out and vote on that day can go out and vote. So really, uh, they're not standing in the way of voters, are they? Already you know that there is fear in, in the southeast. People are already afraid because we, all we hear every now and then is uh, uh, fight between the police or the army with your known gunmen. So what is the guarantee? You know, when you ask people to come out and vote, you know, what is the guarantee? When nobody has been able to arrest this so-called unknown gunman, and when we allow them, to, when the government allows them to operate, you know, it is after they finish operating that you now see the, the, the security agencies coming out. So it's not just coming out to say, come out and vote. People need to be assured that there is enough security. And then, at this, at the, on the other hand, with the number of, like I keep saying, with the number of policemen out there and, the, and soldiers, it can also be difficult for people to come out. People are already scared, and you're adding more to it. I think I have always said it from day one that the issue in the Southeast is an issue for dialogue. I had expected that before these elections, that the federal government would have entered into dialogue with all aggrieved parties to find a way out. But it appears that the federal government is insisting on, you know, being forceful about it. So the question is, if tomorrow, if on Saturday, you know, arms are bullets going up in the sky and all of that, who would now be the one to protect the people? Hmm. Now, um, just as you said, it, it is actually feared that the city at home could harm, um, you know, the election via voter apathy. Uh, but then the Southeast monarchs and religious leaders had on Monday a uh, call for the release of Namdi Kanu. They also asked for dialogue uh, and adoption of political solution to resolve the issue. But it's Wednesday. We have Thursday, Friday, and then it's Saturday. If, if the federal government and the state governments were in, interested in a resolution of sorts, could that have not been done before now? And again, why has it taken so long for all parties concerned to come to a table to deal with this issue? If this is the resolution that the, the, the um, leaders in the Southeast uh, have come up with, including the governors, there's been a joint statement by all the candidates, by the way, asking for de demilitarization. But why has it taken so long, close to the eve of almost the eve of elections? Well, I would say this to you. I think that a lot of People have thought that the elections could not hold, considering the hostility going on in the state. And when it dawned on everybody that the elections could hold, it became necessary to look for ways to uh, protect the lives and properties of those who would come to exercise their uh, civic rights. And I think that it's, it's, it's better late than never. The decision to ask for negotiation, the decision to ask for a roundtable discussion is not too late. The windows are still open. And I implore the state government and the federal government to take advantage of that. Hmm. Let me come back to Dr. Madukai. I hope we have him back now. Um, Dr. Yeah, Madukai. I'm back now. I'm yes, sorry. great. Now, I want to go to other issues that have been raised um, in this um, communique by not just the joint letter by the candidates, but of course the leaders in the Southeast. They're talking about the fact that they've heard, addressing the youth in the Southeast, they've said that they've heard the cries of the young people, but that they're urging them that those issues will be addressed, but that they should all come out en masse and vote um, peacefully and in an orderly manner. And then, of course, 
hoping that the issues that they have raised will be dealt with. Now, I'm not in any way saying that the young people in the Southeast should not listen to their elders, but I'm asking, what's the certainty? Again, I just asked uh, Chilaka the question, judging from the, the time that this has been going on, if there was a willingness on the part of governments, both at the federal and state levels, to deal with this issue, could he have not been dealt with before now? But So where, what is the guarantee that this is not just lip service to the young people so that elections can hold? But when we, the elections are over, is there anything that these young people can hold on to? Will there be a, a change of attitude towards the people in the southeast? Will they be listened to? Well, let, let me just start with uh, where Frank Francis uh, no, stopped. The problem in the South is that the hardened, hard push of our leaders in the federal government. Uh, just as yesterday, OBJ came up and said, look, you need to listen to this young man. The monarch, some of the governors have even come out to say, look, it's time to listen to this man. What we are seeing in Anambra is nothing but an issue of dominance military dominance you see i don't see anybody coming out except few people who will just manage to come out because the tension there is much how can you put up forty thousand police people in a state 260 armor cars for election military everywhere how can you come out most of us that are here are telling our people look be careful i wanted to travel and somebody said don't travel so there's tension in the East. And the best way to solve this problem is not by a military might or telling people that we can dominate you, we can deal with you. And that is what the federal government is doing. This is a time for us to have a sober liberation in thinking, thinking deeper. How do we dialogue with people? How do we see that human beings matter? Of course, you know, why people can be saying we will dominate you, we will deal with you, is because we don't understand the meaning of human life. Each human life matters. And if we know that, then we don't need to do this dominance in militarism. This is democracy for Christ's sake. This is not a military dictatorship but it, era. But this is also but not the first time. Seeing now, but doctor, this is not the first <laughs> time that we've seen soldiers deployed for elections. This is this has happened consistently under this administration. So this is not the first time. So why are we crying foul now that it's happening in Anambra? We must start from a time to start talking about it, you know, abnormalities. The absurdity in this regime is becoming something that you can't even phantom. For instance, soldiers, as far as I'm concerned, are only unleashed by that security breach and externally. But today, what we see is our military are now used to quell internal crisis, which is not supposed to be. That's why we have policemen. So now you are bringing in military, you are bringing armor cars, you are bringing every type of security into one state. Is believe you me, nobody will come out. Mozop it has no credence. When you talk about people that people will respect, they used to will not respect Mozop because to them Mozop has betrayed them. The only person they have a little bit of credence is M K M and Co. And that is why. I am still advocating. Many of us are talking. Please, whatever is going to take the, uh, the federal government, come out of your high horse. Discuss with people. Let's talk. There's nothing wrong in talking. A lot of people are saying certain things. For instance, let me give you an instance. In the north, you, you, some people people. Some people maim people. Some people destroy people. And at the end of it, they are giving, uh, 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 what do you call it? They are giving uh, freedom. They are giving, uh, they are called repentance. And they are giving incentives. How on earth can you justify that as somebody who is talking and you are, uh, you are judging that person? It's injustice. Let's go to the round table. Let's know what is wrong with our country. Because as of today, my brother, my sister, uh, we're having a problem in at our hand. And Alhambra State is a test case. And I'm telling you that the people that will come at that day to vote are only coming for their own whatever. You know, your life is at is stake. Because the military presence there alone is it enough to dissuade people from coming out to but, vote? But is the, is the military not there? I might be wrong. I, again, perception is key in issues like this. The military supposedly is there to protect people, to make sure, to keep the peace, to make sure that these unknown gunmen and these perpetrators of violence do not take over or hijack the elections. I'm guessing. And so is the police to keep the peace. 
Should that not be an assurance of sorts for people to come out and vote en masse? At least, as an assurance. I'm no, no, no. If, in fact, the, the presence of military right from the beginning would have shouted that there's a way to demilitarize the Southeast. The presence of the Southeast is even why we're having this seat at home. Because we have discovered that many people, when they go out, they end up being jailed or being arrested and called and labeled either a pop or ECI. Many of the youth are in the jail today. So the best option, the best strategy that I hope came out with, oh, look, instead of our youth being killed, arrested, or whatever, let's sit at home. Sit at home is a, is a strategy. It's, it's, it's equally telling you that the presence of military is not welcome. But isn't South. that a flawed South. strategy? You are saying in one breath that you want to have free for credible elections, that you can choose leaders that would be able to reflect um, what you want and the gains that you want in the future, but then you want to stay at home and not come out to vote. So who's to say that that election may not be hijacked by the same politicians who you do not want to come back to office? Is that not a flawed strategy? Is that, is it, from the beginning, there's already flawlessness in there. Because uh, what you're seeing, if you look at from your opening statement, the political motivated idea. So what we are seeing today are uh, military mind from the from the federal government and that's why they are muscling everybody because they, they have probably a candidate they want to put it that's what i'm seeing if you want to put up a credible election everybody should be free there should not be tension but today there's tension everywhere so but, not only but in if Anambra we stay State. at home Every part so, of but if, the, if the anambrarians stay at home have they not helped in, if, if if what you're saying is anything to go by you have helped to, you know, put the, the, the last nail in the coffin because that's what the, supposedly the politician wants. If you're saying somebody wants to hijack the elections for, for a particular political party, then if everybody stays at home, then of course you give them room to win. So yes, why not come out and, and, and exercise your franchise? This is my, this is my question. No, let, look, look, look. There's going to be clear, court, open and free fair election as of today you know when you bring in military you are no more bringing fairness to it when you bring in anything that will give tension to civilians that, will, that are going to vote you are no more bringing fairness to it so these are the issues from the foundation that's falseness now let's let's give this um idea about election a free will let police be in charge but bringing the military, do you know what 260 armor car means? If you use that in a uh, or any of these northern uh, states that we're having problem, I think most of what we're talking about bandits would have gone. You're bringing this in for a place that people say, look, we are going to see that. It's not a war zone. So that's a problem. There's already falsehood and there's already foundational falsehood in whatever we want to de deduce because there's already a conspiracy theory Somebody wants to use this to intimidate others so that they will be a judge, the winner, come uh, after the 6th November elections. Okay. Let me move to um, back to Best Man. Um, you've heard what all, all, all the, the guests are talking about. Everybody seems to be saying that the presence of the military is a deterrent of sorts, not necessarily to the unknown gunmen, but even the voters themselves. So it's a few days to elections. How do you deal? How do we deal with the issue of voter apathy, vis-a-vis, -vis, um, you know, demilitarization or the militarization of Anambra State? Well, I was listening to Mr. Chilak, and um, I could sense a feeling of um, populism, and I'm trying to be. I mean, to pay to the gallery as the truth. I've been I've been involved severally in poly in, in elections in Nigeria, both as observer as monitor and on the security level. You know, two things: either there is no election in Anambra, postponed for dialogue, mm -hmm. for there to be a more conducive environment, which can still happen tonight. The government can still announce tonight that we are postponing the election by two, three weeks to give for most reasons. If the election must hold, I even believe the security on ground are not enough. I remember in the Kitty State during the election, the people were saying they wouldn't come out to vote. 
But when they saw the number of security personnel, police, soldiers, um, civil defense, and others, it gave them confidence to come out. It is either the Anambra election is postponed for this dialogue that we talk about, or they should even deploy more security to give the people confidence to step out and vote. Because this, the presence of the military, the presence of the police, the presence of the security apparatus is the only guarantee that will make anybody step out to want to vote. So, and you see, when people make allusion that... Best man, are you to, still the, there? Okay. To, the, to the war zone, for example, it doesn't follow. Don't forget, Niger State alone is bigger than the whole of Southeast put together. Don't forget, Borno alone is bigger than the whole of Southeast put together. I will have deployed more military men to the north than any part of the country in the last 10 years. So let's be, let's be honest. I agree totally in dialogue. And that the dialogue has failed to happen before also contributed to where we are now. So, the federal government just woke up tonight and say, fellow Nigerians, we postponed this election by two or three weeks to allow for further engagement with the agitated people, okay. or we should even send more personnel to Anambra if the election is going to hold on Saturday. Okay. There are so many people that are not in Anambra today because they feel they are not secure because of security personnel. They are not even enough. Okay. Uh, quickly, because we're out of time, I'm going to give uh, Francis and Dr. Maduka just quickly uh, a minute to just wrap this up. Um, Francis, best man is saying that you're playing to the gallery. Well, um, mm -hmm. he talked about it, it is said, and, I, and I got laughing. And I, I know I'll keep to ask him the kind of situation he had in the Kitty State as a day is it the kind of situation you have in Anambra today? I don't know when last you went to the north southeast. Mm -hmm. And I think it's when, when people talk about the southeast, they don't just go sit down somewhere and be talking about southeast. Go to the southeast and find out what is happening there. You cannot walk on the street of the southeast today as a Nigerian. You cannot dress up properly and be walking and driving your car very well in the southeast, especially Anambra and Evo State. It is hot. So all they're saying is that when you militarize the whole environment, you are also creating more fear in the minds of the people. Okay. In other words, we are saying right now that the Nigerian police is incapable of internal security. But that's why you that have the army. Isn't that why you have the army? If you say so the police is incapable, me, that's why you have the army. Should remain, you know that the, the crisis we have that had grown out in the southeast was caused by the army. When they started their AK dance and all the dance they went to do in the southeast. This okay. is where the problem started. We, okay. must, we must trace ourselves back to where the problem started in order to find a solution. All right, Dr. Madika, your last two cents, please. Yeah, because I want to take on and say, and say please, sorry, I, I was in the East just a few weeks ago. And uh, I, I wish you, uh, you didn't see what I saw uh, and see how our youth are being handled, arrested. Mm -hmm. You cannot wear black and black in the South. You cannot wear yellow and yellow. There are some colors you cannot wear, and they will just arrest you. If every pole in Southeast is manned by a ministry. So the scenario you painted in, in Ekiti is very, very different. Because when you're talking about Ekiti, there was no war then. As of today, let me tell you, there's war in Southeast, whether you want to believe it or not. And you cannot oh, I think fight that... war with war. Okay. Dialogue is the, 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 we can use to douse the tension. Just like you said, I think the federal government can still extend this election period so that dialogue will be you know, taken okay. into consideration. Thank you very much. All right, I want to say thank you, Dr. Obi Ma Sonny Maduka, I beg your pardon, Francis Chilaka, and of course, Bestman Jumbunze. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Very yes, we'll keep our fingers crossed and uh, look forward to uh, September, uh, November uh, the 7th in Anambra State. Hopefully, if all things go well. But we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be analyzing the Koi building collapse as we speak. Dead bodies are still being brought out from under that rubble. Stay with us.